Steve Waters uh, with you, former assistant general manager with the Toronto Maple Leafs, longtime player agent as well, guy that knows hockey, uh, but as well as anyone you are ever going to meet. So we talked a lot of Blue Jays in the first 35 minutes. Uh, we're going to bring in Frank D'Angelo in the final 15 minutes of this hour. So let's talk hockey because uh, it's a big week, obviously, coming up in the National Hockey League. You've got uh, July 1st with, of course, all the unrestricted free agents, and that's always a crazy busy day on, uh, on Canada Day. Uh, you've got the draft. Uh, you've got the NHL salary cap going up, and you've got uh, some really good restricted free agent list going into this year. I mean, you, you look at the restricted free agents, Alex Galchenyuk, Dougie Hamilton, Marcus Kruger, Brandon Saad, Derek Stepan, Carl Haglin, Tyler Toffoli, uh, Gustav Nyquist, Vladimir Tarasenko, Braden Holpe. I mean, the list of uh, restricted free agents, a little more probably enticing than the unrestricted free agents, but what do you expect this week, Billy? Uh, obviously, the cap's gone up, teams can spend more, and teams can actually be um, quite a bit over the cap in the summer as long as you get it back down to the cap come the regular season in October. So what are some of the things you're looking for? Well, the more I hear the stories about somebody putting uh, Brandon Saad, uh, signing him to an offer sheet, mm -hmm. I would. I, I don't care. Uh, I, I would because the Chicago Blackhawks have gotten away with murder and their manipulation of the offer sheet, it's time to pay the piper. What would you have to give up? If you sign Brandon Saad and the Blackhawks do not match, what do you well, give you've up? Well, you've got a, a, a list of draft picks okay. uh, that culminates in two firsts. Okay. So you have to, uh, depending on how much money they pay him, of course, but they're going to they're gonna exceed the max on Saad. Uh, but Dougie Hamilton is another... Yeah. Player, I, I go hard after him, a lot harder after him than I would Brandon Saad. But the the Bruins are in in deeper pucky than the Blackhawks. I mean, if you sign Brandon Saad for let's say six and a half million, and you sign him to a ten year deal, I mean, you've oh, got to go after him hard. You don't want the Blackhawks to have a chance. The Blackhawks are going to have no choice because. Well. They, they've they've already they've already incorporated another eleven million onto their payroll with the two uh, uh, with Kane and Taves and yeah. Saad would really now there are there there is a school of thought that says well I don't care I'm matching and I'll I'll find a way of getting out of this well uh, I don't know that that's going to be as easily said as done, as done I mean, well that's impossible I you got to think though because you mentioned Kane and Taves. You throw in Seabrook and you throw in Keith. I mean, yeah. it's, impos it's impossible. It's impossible for them to match. You know how much Saad made? His average salary last year was seven hundred ninety-five thousand dollars. You know, well, I don't know, but I knew he was a, an entry-level guy. Yeah. So um, it had to be down, and he wasn't a first-round pick, so it had to be below nine ninety-five. That's right, seven ninety-five. Talk so about a guy gonna that's going to get a, a raise. They're going to have at least a five million dollar hit. Sign Bickle. Under yep. the same circumstances, they paid Bickle far too much, and so now they've got a pr predicament where if they sign Saad, they got to dump Bickle. They already have to dump um, Patrick Sharp. So th that's fine. That th th does that affect the team? Not really. But Brandon Saad was a pretty. Good, but you made a, a, a good mention. The next guy to go is Seabrook. So yeah. I, I would say this: if Brandon Saad is signed to a offer sheet that they match, they're going to have to trade Seabrook and huh. get him out of the system, make a non-commitment to him. In other words, we're not going to sign you next year, so we might as well make a trade and try and get futures for you because you can't take any more money back. And, and Boston's in the same mess. Boston and Chicago have been in the same mess for three or four years in a row. Well, Boston and Chicago met in the finals a couple years ago, and, and Chicago hasn't really taken a step back since. They went to the Western Final last year before losing to L.A. and won the Cup this year. Boston has been on a steady decline since, well, ever since, they since that Stanley game. Cup. Yeah, they, they, and, and, you know, Peter Chiarelli, who is, is uh, adored by a lot of people, and I'm not one to say anything about him other than look at his record, uh, Peter, in the last four years, did not distinguish himself as one of the best general managers in the game. 
The Sagan deal was an overreaction to a kid. Yeah. In other words, he was Agreed. a little bit of a playboy. Instead of saying, let's live with this and let's get him, no, we'll make a deal. And it wasn't so much letting Sagan go, it was what they took back. Well, and again, we've talked about this and we 100% agree. I mean, you've got a kid that likes to party and whatever. Um, you know, you got to meet with him, get him under wraps. I mean, I know you're not the biggest Patrick Kane fan, but Chicago hasn't seemed to have an issue with his lifestyle. Why no, did well, the Bruins probably... have such an issue with, with uh, Tyler Sagan's lifestyle? Well, I'll tell you where, and I don't know this, but if I were to put my finger on the difference, it's called Jonathan Tapes. Right. You had that leadership to sort of keep Kane under wraps. Jonathan Taves, and they shared the same agent, Pat Brisson. They asked for the same amount of money. There isn't a person in the hockey business that would equate those two except Jonathan Taves. And I think they overpaid Kane by at least $3 million. I mean, he's a castle in disguise. Well, he didn't have a great final. No. Well, he's a, he's a gifted player, but he likes to play the game that used to be. And mm-hmm. uh, they're not allowing, when, when they don't allow Steven Stamkos to score a goal, they're not going to allow Patrick Kane, unless you've got support players like Brad Richards who can make a, still make Yeah, a, Richards set him up for that beautiful goal in game six, his only goal of the series. And if you give Kane an open shot at the net, he can perform magic. There's no yeah. question. So anyway, that's one of their problems, and and the and the Boston problem goes back to the Sagan deal because if they right. still had Sagan, uh, he may or may not be the Playboy of the Month, but they'd have a world class center iceman. And they couldn't score last year. They really struggled scoring goals. Very a, a, a very uninteresting hockey team. And that yeah, they were they were old. They were slow. Chara lost a step. Um, oh. You know. That's how uh, Shirelli lost his job. I mean, right. uh, Cam Neely, who ipso facto is the general manager, he said, hey, we've got to change our style. We've give, given up our best players, our talented players, the guy they stole from the Leafs for, for Phil Kessel. We I mean, all know that. Yeah, but anyway, no need to belabor that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so to answer your question, I, I think the, the restricteds might create some interest because there's nothing like an offer sheet to stir the milk. I remember back in 97, uh, I got Matthias Olin to sign an offer sheet with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that was when they had a Category 4 free agent, which applied to um, European players who weren't signed. So uh, you could sign them, and uh, if, if you, how did it work? If you didn't match... Uh, the Leafs get the player at no compensation. So you knew that he was going to match. And there was and no did. break yeah. in of free, uh, like two firsts, two seconds at that point. Right. Uh, if you didn't match, you just lost him. And uh, I, I, Pat Quinn, who I ended up working for, and when you reflect on it, it Pat must have been in a good mood the day he hired me. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a nasty uh, setup because... In the, in the NHL, the NHL general manager who has that inflicted upon him has 28 allies who are turning against the one guy who had the balls to do it. Didn't that, wasn't that the whole thing that started with uh, uh, Kevin Lowe and, uh, and, and Brian Burke? No, 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 no. It was way before. It was 97. That the Kevin Lowe, Brian Burke. No, no, no. Was I'm saying, wasn't it a similar situation that, got, that, that created that mess, right, with those two? Yeah, well, Vanek. Yeah. Kevin Lowe tried to pull it twice. But, yes, yeah, that, that's, that's what I thought. That, that was the whole reason why, basically, Burke wanted to fight him. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I would have liked to have seen that, too. <laughs> I, I don't think I would have liked Brian Burke's chances. I would have liked Kevin Lowe there. That's what I, that's what I would. I think everybody said, thought maybe Burke is a great fighter. Anyway, I've heard differently. Yeah. Um, the, and and the. the there aren't too many great fighters around. Uh, so I, I, I think that the uh, unrestricted, that's not nearly as exciting. Because, no. you know, they don't, you don't have any uh, reaction from the team that loses them. They've already, they've already reacted to that. 
yeah, uh, to get it, get it to this point. So I, I think the unrestricted might have some very interesting byplay there, and and the two principals would be um, would be uh, Sad and Dougie Hamilton. I mean, if they take Dougie Hamilton, then that whole Kessel mess is gone. 